This week has been very exciting when it comes to new Blender add-ons and updates. And you don't want to miss it, because it is packed with new goodies. We've got new add-ons for creative modeling, generating IV, effective simulation, hard surface modeling, color grading, and more. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. We're gonna start with Surface Flow. Surface Flow is an add-on that makes wrapping a mesh onto another surface super easy and actually accurate. It works like an enhanced shrink wrap modifier, but smarter. And here's the thing, instead of just projecting one object onto another, it truly conforms your mesh onto the target, giving you natural looking deformations on both flat and curved surfaces. And the best part, there's almost zero setup. You just select your target object, add the surface flow modifier, and watch it work like magic in real time. And you will get instant feedback as you adjust settings, even on heavy meshes. And you also have a bunch of controls for fine-tuning things like offset, masking, and quality. It basically lets decals, clothing, or any detail hug the underlying shape perfectly. Whether you are sticking labels on a bottle or fitting armor on a character, this add-on can help you do that. On the other hand, Simply Shatter takes the complexity out of smashing things. I mean, in a good way. So this add-on helps you create controllable fracture effects without the usual manual effort. You can shatter objects such as glass, walls, etc. And then easily run physics simulations on the pieces. It gives you control to choose the shatter method. I mean, like low poly chunks versus high poly detail shards. And you can adjust how many pieces are gonna be there, in addition to randomness and other things all while keeping full control over things like normals and keyframes. There are six ready-made fracture presets included, and you can even mix between them to create some unique results. The add-on also comes with some nice extras, like custom glass materials and dirt map system, to add tiny cracks and grim on the broken edges. And once you've set up a shatter, the add-on's physics engine lets you preview and tweak collisions or half pieces stick or slide, then bake the simulation when it looks right. Next, we're going to talk about IV Generator. IV Generator is a geometry nodes power tool, which lets you cover your surface, whether it be a wall, rock, you name it, with realistic IV in just seconds. But what's the new thing here, you might ask? Because plenty of add-ons can do that. Well, the add-on comes back with 30 plus handcrafted IV presets, which are accessible through a visual browser. So you can just pick a thumbnail and instantly spawn that IV in your scene. It supports surface snapping and even attaching IV across collections, which means it is really easy to drape vines over complex environments. And the coolest bit, the IV isn't static, it has built-in wind animation, so leaves will sway naturally, with adjustable strength and speed, which I think gives you more options than the average IV add-on. On the other hand, AV Bisect is essentially a smarter, more convenient version of Blender's default bisect tool. The add-on reimagines Bisect to make cutting up meshes a smoother experience. In practice, it gives you a better way to slice through objects without fiddling with the usual settings every time. You know what I'm talking about. For example, you can perform multiple cuts quickly or insert loops in one go, which is great for modeling tasks, like adding swift cross-sections or symmetry cuts when working on a complex shape. The idea is that AV Bisect turns what used to be a multi-step manual process into something closer to a single sweep. Essentially draw a cut and you are done. For the film photography buffs, Accurate Film Simulation is a fun little add-on that brings a look of classic analog films into Blender. It basically provides true-to-life color profiles for famous films like Kodak Portra 400, Actar 100, and Gold 200, so your renders can look like they were shot on those films. But under the hood, it is doing some serious math. The add-on uses actual film data, I mean spectral sensitivity curves and so on, to simulate the colors and even the grain of the film emulsions. You have two ways to use it. An ultra-accurate geometry node setup that mimics the film grain down to the individual dye particles, and a more convenient compositor node version that gives you the same color results, but uses procedural noise for grain, making it much faster to render. The result is actually impressively authentic, because you will get those subtle color shifts and grain structure that give renderers a warm, nostalgic film vibe. 
Now, I want to talk about an update for a popular add-on called Colorist Pro. It basically turns Blender's viewport into a professional color grading suite. It lets you apply lights in real time and tweak your scene's colors on the fly, which is kind of a huge boost for look development. It already came with two light packs, seven custom Blender lights, in addition to nine Hollywood-inspired ones for that cinematic flair. But the latest update is where things get really exciting. In the new update, they have added familiar color grading tools right into Blender. You now have color wheels for shadows, mid-tones, and highlights to finally adjust your image's tone. And there is also a full RGB curves editor for precise contrast and color adjustments, and a vibrant slider alongside the usual saturation, which intelligently boosts only the muted colors so we don't accidentally neon blast everything. But the update doesn't stop here. You get controls for tweaking exposure, whites and blacks, and shadow and highlight levels, in addition to white balance sliders, for temperature and tint, to dial in perfect colors. And they even introduce sensitive color grading, so we can target specific hues. Think about isolating and tweaking just the reds or blues in your shot. On the technical side, the add-on also integrates an ACES color management setup, making sure your viewport grading plays nice with the industry standard color space. Still with updates, but this time with height steps, which was released actually a couple of months ago, and people really liked it. And it basically changes how the hide and unhide workflow operates. By default, Blender's hide and unhide is an all or nothing kind of deal. If you unhide, it brings everything back all at once, which can be annoying in complex scenes. Hide steps fixes that by remembering each hide action as a separate step, so you can incrementally unhide objects one at a time in reverse, I mean in the order that you hit objects. So it basically lets you peel back layers of the scene gradually, which is super useful when you are isolating parts on your work. The new update in version 2 makes it even better, and now the add-on provides a list in the side panel, showing all the hidden items and the order of your height steps. You can directly pick an entry from that list to unhide a specific object or step, which was way more intuitive than it was before. This update also supports height steps in the edit mode, hiding and revealing meshes parts, and lets you customize how many steps to remember. I personally think this is so important, it actually should be part of Blender itself. Also, you can do more jiggle physics with Jiggle Maker. This is like the third add-on about jiggle physics in the last 30 days or so, so I don't know what's going on here. Anyways, traditionally setting up jiggles for things like soft body motion or characters' bellies, clothing, etc. means fiddling with duplicate meshes, in addition to weight painting, cloth simulations, and hoping nothing breaks. This add-on called Jiggle Maker basically automates the whole process into a simple three-step process. You just choose what you want to jiggle, and it even comes with preset proxy meshes for common body parts, or you can use your own. Next, bind it to your main mesh, and the add-on sets up all the needed surface deform and class physics under the hood. It includes physics presets, like Jiggly or Farm, which you can apply so you can get good-looking results right away, without making dozens of values. There's also a cloth bake admin panel, which is awesome for managing multiple jiggle sims. It finds all the jiggle related cloth modifiers, I mean in your scene, and lets you bake or clear caches in one place. The add-on also smartly warns you if something is off, like unapplied scales or an armature not in the rest pose, so you can avoid the usual problems. Now, if your Blender M panel is overflowing with too many add-ons, Super Tabs is gonna help you. Just like the other similar add-ons, this is like an amp panel organizer. It lets you consolidate and manage those countless tabs so your interface stays neat. The concept behind it is an add-on panel controller that groups the add-on panels into categories or sub-tabs. You can switch between custom tab groups or presets, showing only relevant tools that you will need at the moment, and it even includes a search function to quickly find an add-on panel by name. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about EasyDriver. EasyDriver is actually a free add-on that lives up to its name by making Blender's driver system, well, easier. If you've ever rigged anything in Blender, you know drivers can be powerful but a bit technical to set up, and the add-on simplifies this by automating the creation of drivers. And the workflow is actually straightforward. 
you move or rotate a controller, like a bone or an object, between two poses, and the add-on will auto-detect the motion, figuring out which axis moved and by how much, and then create a driver linking the motion to your target properly. For example, you could pose a character's face into a smile, and automatically drive a shape key for the cheeks, or move a clever object and have it drive multiple mechanical parts. The ammo supports using bones, even those in IK rigs, or objects as a driver source. And you can drive all sorts of targets, other bones transforms, shape keys, or even arbitrary properties like modifier settings and visibility toggles. And it has many other features that you can check for yourself if you want to. And there you have it guys. If you are interested in these add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.